After changing his clothes, Lu Sheng went back to the classroom with one thought on his mind. He thought about how having just him or only his younger sister, Lu Qing, in their family would make things easier for their parents. Lu Qing was talented and could easily get into Wuhan University, getting scholarships and subsidies. Recently, Lu Sheng had been thinking about making money. On one hand, he wanted to ease the burden on his family so his parents wouldn't have to work so hard. On the other hand, his martial arts training required a lot of money to support it. For example, Lu Sheng's basic meals weren't enough to provide the nutrients he needed to improve his martial arts skills. If he didn't eat better, his progress would slow down, and he might even get sick. Lu Sheng used to think that becoming a first-level official warrior would be a good way to make money. That way, he could get a monthly allowance from the Vumang and use it to buy things to help him train better. With his new methods, Lu Sheng didn't just improve his martial arts skills, but also his performance in class. He listened carefully to the teacher's lectures and found that his brain had become much more flexible since he started practicing regularly. Lu Sheng guessed that he was absorbing a lot of memories in his dreams, and this process was stimulating his brain's development. As a result, his memory, brain speed, and other abilities were improving, making him smarter. Talking about fantasy, it helped him understand things better. Now, studying textbook knowledge felt easy for Lu Sheng. He could understand concepts that he struggled with before, and he felt like a student master because of it. A scholarship was coming his way, and Lu Sheng already had a black credit card. He couldn't wait to head to the mall and plan how to use the money. It wasn't just about wanting to splurge, he was eager to boost his strength. Lately, as he continued his body training and breathing exercises, Lu Sheng felt a constant hunger in his body. This signaled rapid growth in his energy and blood, but his system lacked enough nourishment. Every muscle cell in his body craved energy. Although his father had bought him a tonic last week, it wasn't enough to satisfy his body's needs. If this malnutrition continued, it could cause permanent damage and even weaken his strength. Martial arts training tapped into the body's potential, but without proper replenishment, it could harm him. To supplement his energy, Lu Sheng needed to consume a lot of external sources, such as food and medicine. While food provided some energy, medicinal supplements were more effective because they contained rich nutrients. However, these medicines were expensive, so the saying poor culture and rich military wasn't just a phrase, it reflected the reality of martial arts training. In Baihe City's central shopping mall, there's a store called Wu Yao Tang that specializes in health supplements. supplements. Lu Sheng thought to himself. However, the prices of these oral supplements made him frown. The nourishing blood powder my father bought last week cost 3,000 yuan per pair. It's the most common tonic. There's also Peikshu powder, Zhuanggu powder, Yang Yuan powder. Each one is pricier than the last. The most expensive Yang Yuan powder costs 15,000 yuan per pair, which is outrageous. Lu Sheng initially thought he had a decent amount of money, but now he realized it wasn't enough at all. Even with a 30,000 yuan, he could only afford 10 sets of Yangshu powder or 2 sets of Yang Yuan powder. If he had applied for a first-class scholarship of 10,000 yuan as planned, he wouldn't even be able to afford a single pair of Yang Yuan powder. Martial arts practice costs a fortune. Lu Sheng realized this only now, seeing the expenses behind those successful martial arts students like Yang Yifei in school. Being from an ordinary family like him and Lu Qiming, they couldn't compare with those who had more resources. In this era of martial arts, it's incredibly challenging for someone from a poor family to excel. Lu Sheng also understood the heavy burden on his parents. Reflecting on his sister Lu King's talent, he thought, Lu King's idea is right. With her martial arts talent, if she hadn't been held back by an average brother like me, her achievements would be much higher. It felt like a wasted opportunity for Lu Sheng. If their father, Lu Da Hai, provided two sets of nourishing blood powder each month to both Lu Sheng and Lu King, the family limit, it would be obvious that allocating all four to Lu King alone would yield better results. This realization fueled Lu Sheng's determination to make money. He knew he needed to work harder, not just for his own progress, but also for his sister's martial arts journey. Lu Sheng didn't linger any longer and left them all. Walking home after a day of intense training was a good way for him to unwind. As he walked, he passed by high school students in uniforms, heading excitedly to the nearby internet cafe. Seeing them stirred something in Lu Sheng's heart. Not long ago, he was just like them, spending his days aimlessly at school and then at the internet cafe. It felt like living in a haze, lacking direction or motivation. But now, he emerged from that haze with a clear mind, knowing exactly what he wanted and where he was headed. Do you regret it? He asked himself quietly. I don't regret it, came his firm reply. Despite giving up some fleeting happiness, he felt more fulfilled and satisfied now. Suddenly, 
various boxing memories flooded Lu Sheng's mind, like pieces of a puzzle falling into place. It felt like something inside him had clicked, like a breakthrough. He realized that the barriers he faced in his boxing techniques were shattered, and his understanding of the art reached new heights. It was a transformative moment, like shedding old skin and embracing something new. Lu Sheng felt confident that he could master any boxing technique and adapt it to different situations. He felt integrated and whole. That's probably what it means, Lu Sheng thought to himself. He remembered his teacher mentioning in class that powerful martial artists often experience profound insights in certain environments and moods, leading to significant transformations in their skills. It's called an epiphany in martial arts. But whether Lu Sheng had just experienced one, he couldn't say for sure. What mattered most to him was that his strength needed to improve further. He realized that if he were to fight his previous self, the current version would likely win within just a few moves. That's the difference his enhanced boxing skills had made. Despite the urge to rush to the Hongqian Martial Arts Hall for another test, Lu Sheng restrained himself. He understood that the strength he possessed wouldn't change just because of more tests. It was something innate, and avoiding a test wouldn't make it disappear. Despite the distance between the central shopping mall and his community, Lu Sheng opted to walk home instead of taking a bus. After finishing his meal, Lu Sheng said, I'm going back to my room. He put down his bowl and chopsticks, calmly greeted his family members, and then headed to his room. Concerned about Lu Sheng's unusual behavior, his mother Zheng Yufen remarked, What's wrong with Lu Sheng today? Is he feeling unwell? She noticed that he had eaten half a bowl of rice less than yesterday. Lu Qing shook her head in disbelief, then excused herself, saying, Mom and Dad, I'm going back to my room to exercise. With the recent changes in Lu Sheng's life, Lu Qing felt a sense of unease in her heart, prompting her to intensify her practice routine. Lu Da Hai comforted his wife, saying, our child is growing up, showing responsibility, and focusing on studies. This is a good sign, we shouldn't worry. Concerned about her husband's well-being, Zheng Yufen asked, you went to do casual work again? Didn't you complain of back pain yesterday? Can your body handle it? Unfazed, Lu Da Hai replied, it's okay. Just put on two plasters for me later. Listening to his parents' conversation from his room, Lu Sheng took a deep breath and tried to calm down. His heightened senses enabled him to hear their voices clearly even through closed doors. Feeling a sense of urgency, Lu Sheng did a couple of exercises to clear his mind before slipping into a dreamlike state. He had learned to fall asleep quickly and easily. A bulky zombie immediately noticed Lu Sheng and charged at him with a low growl. Without hesitation, Lu Sheng swiftly moved forward, blocking and punching. In just two moves, he snapped the neck of the zombie and tattered clothes before him. A black wisp of smoke emerged and swiftly melded into Lu Sheng's body. Another martial arts practitioner. Lu Sheng breathed out, feeling the rush of absorbed memories. My strength has definitely increased. The skirmish offered Lu Sheng a clearer grasp of his current prowess. He had encountered this type of bulky zombie before, a different breed from the uniform clad ones. Their strength varied unpredictably, so it's probably on par with a first class official warrior. Lu Sheng contemplated. Yet, even against this formidable opponent, Lu Sheng emerged victorious within moments. He had been trekking through the misty wilderness for an indeterminate stretch of time, and by his reckoning, he should be nearing base 1359 as per the memories extracted from the zombies. Strange, Lu Sheng mused, I haven't encountered a single alien beast yet. Could they all be holed up in the ruins of the base? Or did they retreat after laying waste to it? Uncertain, Lu Sheng remained cautious. Despite his rapidly improving martial arts skills, the dream world remained a perilous realm, fraught with unknown dangers. He had never experienced death in a dream, and he wasn't keen on finding out the consequences. Continuing his journey, Lu Sheng dispatched several more zombies along the way. Each encounter enriched his martial knowledge, filling in gaps in techniques and bringing him closer to his limits. Meanwhile, his enhanced boxing proficiency steadily ascended to new heights. In the midst of absorbing memories from a defeated zombie, Lu Sheng's gaze abruptly fixated ahead. The mist parted like a curtain, revealing the silhouette of a grand, dilapidated structure. At last, he breathed, base 1359, here I come. Lu Sheng's heart remained calm but cautious. The memories of base 1359 being overrun by alien beasts weighed heavily on him, reminding him of the imminent danger ahead. After a half-hour dash, Lu Sheng arrived at the foot of the colossal city. Gazing up at its towering walls, he was struck by its sheer magnitude. The city walls reminded him of scenes from an anime, but the reality before him was far more imposing. The city's walls bore scars of massive tears, hinting at the devastation within. 
Lu Sheng's thoughts turned to the survivors, the state of the world, and the mysteries surrounding his own existence. With each step toward the city, Lu Sheng felt he was edging closer to the answers he sought, eager to uncover the truth that awaited within. Lu Sheng carefully approached a massive gap torn in the city wall, feeling the ominous presence growing stronger with each step. He marveled at the sheer size of the gap, which was easily seven or eight meters high. However, his awe turned to terror as he caught sight of a commanding figure seated atop the tallest building in the city center. The overwhelming sense of danger made his scalp tingle, and Lu Sheng felt his knees weaken, collapsing to the ground. The figure exuded an aura of unimaginable strength, leaving Lu Sheng in a state of primal fear. He realized that the zombies he encountered were once formidable masters, their fighting instincts now driving them in the absence of consciousness. This revelation filled Lu Sheng with dread, unable to fathom the level of strength he would need to confront such foes. With this, the chapter concludes. Don't miss out on the next installment. Hit that subscribe button and join us for the continuation of Lu Sheng's remarkable story.